Jason, what would you say is the uh, Greek word for to do? Well, as we all know, the word <laughs> ochel. Oh, yeah. Oh, means. Oh, hey, Jason. This is weird. Oh, Wait, I. Um, oh my gosh, why do I not know that one? You you I, know this one well. I do because I remember because it's a, hell. I had a monomic about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hell. Right. It's, what what is hell? Uh, oh hell. Tent. Uh, egg salad. <laughs> is it the egg salad sandwich? Carrot cake. <laughs> good, good morning. Welcome to wake up. We'll tent. be. Oh tent. That's right. Camping. Oh hell. It's a tent. There's no replacement for Jason. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up Again. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. Pastor Jason. We got a great show for him. We got it's two, We got a scripture for your day, which yeah. we are going to be in Galatians uh, three thirteen. And uh, but we got TikTok Tuesday. TikTok Tuesday. This is where we do what. Well, we look at the trending TikToks. We filter out the crud and we show them to you here. So these are the good ones. <laughs> that hits me so hard. <laughs> no, I love him. All right. Nope, my favorite. Why'd you do it? Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Please. Please. Why did why you? Did you... <laughs> what makes it so funny is he sounds like really intense. Like, why'd you do it? Like, why'd you cross the road? All right. What do you guys want? Uh, let me get a frate motete. And then uh, let me get a Trenta pinkity drinkity. A tr Trenta. Frankity pinkity dinky. <laughs> frate <laughs> motete. Okay, so, so we'll just come back. He'd never been to Starbucks before and, and oh they, my God, they just made so up drinks funny. that don't exist. Oh my it's gosh. actually a really long TikTok. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, it's it, funny. It, it was funny. Good morning. Yeah. We got some great stuff for you today. Yeah. And uh, we talked about today that um, the price has been paid. Yeah. Right? I was at uh, I was at Vito's and me and my wife were having a lunch and and with the family and stuff mm -hmm. and so then I asked for the bill and the waitress goes oh I'm sorry um, the people that were over there some really awesome people had already paid your your bill wow now I guess I could stay there huh? and argued with them and said no I'm paying mm -hmm. and no I really want to pay and I think that oftentimes we go through life doing that trying to pay for what's been paid for mm. and so here we see that Christ paid the price to free us from the curse that the laws in Moses' teachings bring by becoming cursed instead of us. What's the scripture? It's in Galatians 3.13. Wow. So Christ became a curse so that we wouldn't be under a curse. And he paid the price yeah. so that we didn't have to be limited in our life. So whatever Christ paid for right, or carried, you, you get for free. Which and, is kind of cool. And that's an important thing. I, he took on shame so you don't have to live in shame. Absolutely. He took on emotional abuse so you don't have to live with emotional abuse. He took our sickness. He bore disease. He carried your pain, your infirmities, your sin. Uh, he, he paid it all for free so that you can walk freely in all the good things that he's given you. They're yours. Don't and, you find sometimes when you talk to people that are struggling... That they uh, that they they carrying a weight of what they even stress and worry and anxiety mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like we, we we carry it it's so heavy and it's it's limiting you but Jesus said just cast it on me yeah I'll, I'll I'll take care of that right so he's he he carries so that we can go forth and people oftentimes beat themselves up over their bad decisions and things well you bring up a good one like regrets uh, people carry the of, of the things that we carry sometimes we carry our shame. We carry condemnation. We carry the, the bad things that we're ashamed of. Right. Um, one of those things is regret, something to do with raising kids or something to do with re past relationships or something to do with how you lived before. Mm -hmm. Something happened, some kind of action or something, and you can go back and replay it in your mind over and over again. And, and those regrets, what they do, unfortunately, is they become baggage to your future. Oh. So you're carrying something that, that slows you down. It weighs you down. It I causes you to make bad decisions. So the right person, right relationship comes along, but you're like, ah, I got to guard my heart. I've been hurt. I don't want to get betrayed again. And so you push out the right people. You push out the right opportunities. Something comes along your way, and you're rejecting all the good things that God's bringing you, maybe because you don't feel like you deserve it. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good one. Yeah, maybe you feel like, well, God's not going to bless me. So then if you don't believe he's blessing you, which he has, he has already decided. See, it's already been a Then you won't accept it. It's already been determined that you're yeah. not under a curse. Right. But you can live under a curse that you're not under. I didn't have to accept them paying for my meal. 
Right. I'm saying, no, I'm still paying. I could have left the money on the table. Yeah. And I could have not accepted right the blessing that I had. Yeah. And I think that people can go through life and not accept uh, the things. And as you were saying, they carry old baggage into new things. Yeah. Right, and you're dragging it along, and it does. I did a sermon like that where I had a guy come up on stage, and he was dragging. I had this sled thing with all this weight on it, and a big muscular guy. But you couldn't even keep up with me when you're trying to pull that through. And so you find yourself as you're pulling weight you weren't designed to pull, trying to keep up with. And you're like, well, I can't keep up. Yeah. Well, let it go. Yeah. Right. Just let that. Just frozen it. Just mm-hmm. let it go, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, move forward. You know. So I take savvy. We go. Daddy daughter time oftentimes we'll go to Forever 21. Mm-hmm. I know Forever 21 very well. This is her favorite store. Yeah. And I enjoy Forever 21 cuz I don't even know how they make money. Like you get like four shirts they're like, "Oh, that's 7 cents." I don't know how oh, they do Good I, value. Like I go, "How how do you guys make money?" Yeah. Like, now how old is your daughter? She's 14. Is that weirding you out that she's in Forever 21? I know cuz she's not 20. I just, the first time I go, "You're not 21, honey." Yeah. It's not, she's like, "I'm sorry, you can't shop here." You can't, how can you shop? There? I'm not 21. Yeah. What are we doing? What do you do when you're 22? I have no idea. Yeah, you can't shop here. It's ended at 22. I don't know. They've really limited their market. <laughs> but yeah, you're cheating. You're in there well, cheating. You're in forever. You're forever in 21. 21. So, so we get her back and get her stuff. And she's cute because she is cute. She's just cute because I'm training her. As I learned Jason did great with his daughter. And I won't tell you no. And she's reasonable, but she'll get some stuff and we'll fill a bag up. And then in the beginning, I'd be like, she's carrying a bag. I go, no, no, daddy carries your bag. So I carry her bag because I want, once again, we're, uh, how she's going to have men treat her. Yes, it's You know true. what I'm saying? It's just honor. She can carry her own ba- bag, mm. but no, I carry it. So now we get to the Don't place. Don't get me started we get to the place now. I was, I was on my crutches. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had crutches this last weekend. Yeah. And so then we, Forever 21, and they go, and she goes, here you go, Dad. And I go, okay. <laughs> and I'm carrying it on the crutches. Yeah, you do. And she didn't even, like, it's just, it's become a habit. And I think it needs to be here, a habit carry my stuff. that your father, God, wants to carry your stuff. Yeah. He bore your stuff with his crutches. He bore your sickness, your pain, your stuff. You're like, well, this is not. It's not my bad back. I give yeah. it to God. I have a healed back. Well, I, I think I think when you talk about like something uh, physically, like right. it's not my bad back. Right. I think that's an interesting thing. It says that he carried our sickness. Right. right? That's what the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53. He carried our sickness, so and our pain, and he carried our pain. So uh, sickness causes pain, and sometimes we just have pain. We're not sick. So right. It's not yours. And now you, it comes to you and tries to attach to you, but you have to recognize it's not yours. It's already been carried. And so Jesus is like, here, I took that and I took it to the cross. And then up on the cross, I died and I left it there dead. Dead. Nailed it to it. So, so I'd be cursed as any man who hangs upon a tree is what the Bible says. So he took the that curse. That was in the same scripture. You know, inside of the curse are, are things like sickness and disease. Inside... You, you don't you, you don't have to participate in that. I know it can come to you, but it doesn't have to be yours forever. It can be temporary. And so we have to learn to recognize this is not mine. This is temporary. I'm believing God for my healing. And then, and then speaking to that, uh, in Jesus' name, be healed, body. In Jesus' name, I'll never have a migraine again. In Jesus' name, my back pain is healed. And, and recognizing that the body is sometimes rebellious against uh, what you're commanding to do, but you're in charge, not your body. And so why not give that thing to Christ? And I think sometimes we, we've we had something for maybe long enough that we learn to just to live with it, tolerate the pain. And that's it. I'm and fine, I'm tolerated, I'll be all right. Isn't it interesting that we, we tolerate? So I'm carrying something Jesus already carried. Right, and so you, it just became just something that you do, mm-hmm. right? You just to, you tolerated just negative emotions, you tolerated... Uh, a depression you just people learn to live with limitations in their life mm-hmm. rather than saying no I'm gonna give this to God in 2022 I'm not gonna live with depression anymore I'm not gonna live with this I'm not gonna well, live with stress he carried and your sorrows right depression here you go God I don't have to carry my depression anymore no. I, I want to carry because God says he replaces it he, he gives you uh, for your ashes which is your bad past he'll he'll give you a beautiful garment mm. right Beauty There's an exchange. The Beauty oil for of ashes. joy for mourning. Blessings on your grief. Praise God. I give you the... It's a great exchange. Yeah. You can't go anywhere else. Garment of praise for a spirit of heaven. The place as close as maybe the dollar yes. store. I give you a dollar and you give me something better. Maybe you need to go to the store and do an exchange. 
Oh, that, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Something so, broken? Because if you go to Walmart... Sometimes like at, at, after Christmas and you get some gifts coming in, you're like, ah, I think I'm going to exchange that. You know, maybe right. it was the wrong size. That doesn't really fit me. So you have to go to the store yep. and you have to be like, hey, I'd like to exchange this. This is depression. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your your garment of, of, of... I want a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. Here's the spirit of heaviness. I'm taking off the old man. Here you go. And then can I get my garment of praise? And that and, and Jesus is that exchange, isn't he? This exchange. It reminds me of Forever 21. And Savvy is always like, Dad. Because I always do the same. It's always the same. It's a dad joke, I guess. Because mm-hmm. they they're always big. They're like, all right, so you have uh, 30 days to exchange this. And then there's always, Savvy always gets, I let her get little earrings and, and things. They always go. And then the earrings and stuff, you those are not, you can't ever uh, return these items. And so then she gets it all. And I go, okay, so now on, on the earrings, sweetie, and I always talk to her, I go, earrings, sweetie, we got to make sure that you like them because we got 30 days to return them. And they always go, no, 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 sir, you, you can't, these are not returnable. I go, I know. She goes, oh, okay. And so she's good back. And I go, so anyway, try them out when we get home, and then we'll bring them back next week if they don't fit. And she goes, no, you, you can't, <laughs> sir. <laughs> What does Savvy do? She's always like, Dad, stop. Stop, stop, Dad. Just please stop, Dad. please don't embarrass me anymore. <laughs> it's a dad thing. She does like it. We've always had fun shopping. She says I'm a child. You are a child. I am a child. You know yeah. that I am a child. Yeah, you are. So, yeah, because I hold up like a girl thing. I'm like, sweetie. She's like, Dad, knock it off. <laughs> I'm like, what do you think? Is it, is it, you think it'll fit? <laughs> anyway, we have fun. Let's pray over their day. Have you been carrying something that you shouldn't yes. carry? Man, let this show be the catalyst that moves you to a different place. Let's let's make that exchange right now in the prayer. Amen. Father, we just see ourselves giving away those things that you already carried, Jesus, that Jesus already bore for us. We're giving away now, Father. We're casting it upon you. We're throwing it off of ourselves and towards you, Father, that, that you're carrying, Jesus, you're carrying our sorrows, our pain, sickness. That, Father, you sent your word and it has healed us. The people that are struggling with sickness or disease right now, they've gotten a bad report. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just speak to those bodies now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Pain, go. You're not have migraines anymore. You're not going to have uh, digestive issues anymore. You're mm. not going to have arthritis anymore. Arthritis is leaving that bad doctor's report about that uh, lesion or cancer or, or whatever they said that you have, skin cancer. It's healed now in Jesus' name. It goes away. Because Jesus already took all of our sickness to the cross and depression is gone. Tomorrow you're going to wake up and that depression will have lifted off of you and it will never come back again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Watch this clip. Your God reigns, which in the Hebrew is is the word rocks. Your God rocks. Yeah, I made that up. It's not really (laughs) rocks, but that would be cool. Listen, you watchmen. Your watchmen lift, lift up their voices. Now, watchmen were the, the people in the city who stood on the wall and watched for attacking armies. So that was their job. Night and day, they would stand, and they were the watchmen over the city, and they would call out if there was bad news. But these watchmen, it says, they, they lift up their voices together. Hey, Jim. You know, because they can see each other. Maybe, uh, hey. Like, whoa! It says that they lift up their voices together. They... They shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. The world, the kingdom of this world right now is addicted to bad news. And, and news is what happened, right? It's a story of what happened, or it's what's happening, or it's what's going to happen. And in the world today, it's, it's like, well, it was bad, and it's bad right now, but it's about to get a lot worse. That's the news today, and I don't mean just on the news like that we listen to with TV, but I mean like just the people when you talk to people. The kingdom of this world, the news is bad, right? We're about to go into a war. There's a huge storm going to attack the East Coast. It's going to be so bad. I don't know if you heard that Ted and Nancy are going to get a divorce. Jimmy lost his job. Gas prices are going up and blah, 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 and here comes the bad news. And so when people carry bad news, then you hear the bad news, and then the news, the bad news wants to get up on you so that you can then go and, and parrot the bad news to other people. But God imagines a world where his people are carriers of good news. Imagine a world where all the believers are just walking around, locked and loaded, with good news. 
And we have good news. You know, you can find bad news and you can find good news. But the believers walk into their workplace. Imagine you walk into your workplace and you say, Hey, everybody, I got some good news. Uh, then you, you conquer all day long and you're, I know we're weary and we did the contracts. We made the phone calls, but then we get home. But what if you were locked and loaded with good news? Good news. I got good news, honey. I got good news, babe. I got good news for the kids. I'm a carrier of good news. And it says even, even the watchman, the watchman's job was to look for bad news and then to call out the, we're being attacked. That's the watchman's job. But God says, listen, let's change that. And you might say, Pastor, I'm like one of this, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a negative personality. I am. I'm, like kind of, I'm a little bit of a negative Nancy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a calamity Chris. I'm, you know, I, I look for the, pro, this is part of what I do. It's just how I'm built. God built me this way. I look, for the, I look for the negative things and then I report the problems. That's what I do. That's just how I'm built. And God's like, okay, okay you may, even you, even you, the watchman, whose job is to look for bad things, I want to change that job. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Be in church this weekend, wherever your church might be. And uh, have an epic, epic week. Mm -hmm.